Geek Tank Radio, News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. Welcome, everyone. We are the Geek Patrol, and our microphones don't have a stun setting. Today, we're joining you from the diaper aisle at a Tatooine grocery store. You guys, I found this brand over here. It claims it'll keep your baby hut's crib dry, even up to a 10-gallon evacuation. I mean, that's pretty impressive. I now, now, the me. thing to remember, when that... <laughs> When that box says 10 to 12 pounds, it's not kidding. This one over here can... Uh, I thought for a accom- second you said 10 to 12 miles. Well, you never know, Max. There's a lot. They have to accommodate a lot. One here Maybe the, uh, maybe the Sarlacc diaper would be 10 to 12 miles. Sarlacc diaper. They got an eight-legged diaper over here. Alan. A multi bowel diaper. Yeah. I Brandon. need new co-host, I swear to God. Brandon is just <laughs> sitting here, yeah, contributing nothing but dirty looks. But anyway, welcome well, to... Uh, gee, you brought up a dirty topic. Well, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> welcome to uh, Geek Tank Radio, everybody. I'm Joe Thorderson, here with my friends Brandon Olmstead and Alan Gilbert, and our buddy Max over there behind the glass. Trying and, out uh, the diapers. Yeah. Mm. Um, we're all together. <laughs> Last week, because of travel, logistics, we've had just, you know, whatever. Somehow, though, we're finally all caught up. Uh, on the Sandman. I've already gone through the series twice. I'm about to start on it for a third time because uh, my wife's ready to watch it. And we're going to finally do our Sandman discussion. So we'll we'll get into that a little later in yeah, the show. Yeah, we summon up in two words. Yeah, watch it. Yeah, there you go. no kidding. So, um, Brandon, you, uh, I don't know if this is another one of these trigger things. I feel like this is more of a, I don't know, it's a cautionary tale, but it's the harsh realities of str- streaming series renewal. Yeah, and, and a lot of... One of the things I want to talk about when it gets to that is very Sandman, Sandman related. Oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Sounds like it's related to a couple of shows that it, we're very fond of. It right? is. It is. And it's it's a completely understandable situation, but uh, it, it's it's not really one of those things that makes you happy. But yeah. It's not really something you can get mad about. There's only one real way to you know focus on it, and that's to watch. Right. Absolutely. Um, I just want to put this out there. Uh, I have to, sur- I, I guess I have to either surrender my geek card or get it punched, you know, or whatever. <laughs> I <laughs> Don't th- say get it punched. <clears throat> Alan is staring at you already. <laughs> well, you guys, this is Labor Day weekend. If you're listening from, you know, I know, you know, we have listeners around around the country and even around the world. Around the world, baby. Here in the Mid-South, we are about a five and a half hour drive away from Atlanta. Right. And of course, every Labor Day weekend is the big celebration of Dragon Con which is a five day it's one of these conventions they i almost think they fudge the numbers down they say that they're only going to sell eighty thousand tickets and i'm sure there's over a hundred thousand people there well i mean, I mean you, it's nuts let's just so. let's just talk about it not everybody at dragon con actually has a pass to dragon con i mean it takes they take over the city there's basically. multiple you know hotel bars mm. and parades and various other things you don't have to buy a ticket to attend those things. No, it's so, it, yeah, it's a spectacle. It's great. It's a big celebration. It's our favorite one it, in terms of the I, mega conventions. I, we like it I, more than Comic Con. So. I don't <laughs> agree with you on it being my favorite one. Okay, but it. I don't really consider it. A I'm convention. talking about mega events. I don't. Consi- I'm not about, I was gonna say yeah. I don't consider consider it a, a convention. I consider it a big old party. It's it is. There's a party I don't, I don't vibe because I like it. Because personally, when I'm there, I don't care anything about autographs. I don't care anything about the celebrities that are there. I don't need. I don't want to stand in line for 15 minutes to get a picture taken yeah. with you know Neil Adams. You mean, I want the vibe, right? And you don't need you know the vibe mm-hmm. makes it something different. It is. It's it's a great time. But uh, I basically the reason I got to give up my geek card is because I. I had aspirations to go meet our buddy Cliff, you know, mm-hmm. with, who runs ShadowCon, our big yeah. SCA buddy. He, that's his yearly vacation. I was going to meet up with him, and at the last minute, I made the sensible, I don't know if this is sensible, but oh. I made the boring decision to take advantage no. of the Labor Day appliance sales, and mm-hmm. my wife and I went and well, bought a stove I, um, with the money I was going to use for I wa- the trip. I wa- so. I wa- he he <laughs> sells right. this to the food hold on, dude. Hold on. Yeah. I want to I wanna make a comment on this, Joe. First okay. of all, you are... Even if I have to fight hordes of nerds and weebs, I will make sure that you get to save a face and keep your geek card there. Okay. Because I've been in your kitchen recently. Max, you've been in Joe's kitchen recently. Alan, I don't remember when the last time you were there, but we've all made it over there at some time. You know what a train wreck my kitchen is. you, You made the responsible decision to 
take care of some business. And your kitchen is starting to look amazing. Well, we're because we're redoing mm. the whole thing now mm. that the kids are old and there's no, and they're yeah. moved out and there nobody's destroying anything. Now we're gonna get it, <laughs> you know, the way it actually should look. So we're yeah. I mean, right. well, and I mean, let's next just, year I want to get still in the food, well, dude. I bought a stove instead yeah. of going to. Well, that's you know, true. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> way but to go, let's, dude! Finally, let's 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 take a quick moment to talk about the history of your house. You bought your house from a local a celebrity and lunatic, Prince Mongo. Yeah, and let's not are, give the address out. At no, Brandon. no, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not going to give out the address. Everybody already knows. Right, right. Joe. right. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, you ha and this is the first time you've really got a chance to remodel anything in the kitchen. Well, we've done everything in the house, and we right. we, we no, we actually did. We put a new floor in there twenty years ago, which mm -hmm. is yeah, very dated now. And yeah, I was gonna say that that's about it. Ago. Yeah, we didn't. We never really but, did you know, the full it's remodel. Like you're so. you're doing the cabinets. You're doing the stove. You're doing you you yeah. you're replacing your dishwasher. We're reconfiguring. Yeah, we're and doing I mean, it all. I went over there to drop off promotional stuff when I got back from Covington, and already your kitchen looks so much different yeah so so i guess next year the goal would be to get back there i Plus i love the dragon talk, con guys. you gotta do that but mm. you know it's money wise this will be a little more long lasting i did i was gonna this try is to a get, better investment i assure you i will I, I guess i can put this out there real quick my only souvenir i had my eye on is william shatner is going to be at dragon con this year mm -hmm. and if you guys uh i don't know that i've ever posted this picture brandon i think i posted it on my um Thor's, uh, Thor's Hammer Carpentry and Wood Turning page, <clears throat> Thor'sHomes.com. I make these custom baseball bats. I have a very, uh, very interesting uh, Batman bat. It's got it's mm -hmm. a black bat with the bat yeah. symbol on it. It's got really interesting artwork that I made on my lathe. And I wanted William Shatner to sign the center of the bat symbol. Okay. I don't know why, because well, I was uh, like, that would be the most random well, see, collectible ever. See, the thing is, so many people <laughs> would look at you about that and go, why did you get William Shatner to sign a Batman bat? And I'm just sitting there going, why not? He voiced Two-Face. Well, that's true. But, I mean, that's indeed. the most, that would be it a one-of-a-kind. It is very random. I mean. I want a one-of-a-kind collectible. I don't want to just have him sign a Star Trek action figure or something. I want, so... Maybe next year. I hope he'll yeah. be there next year. But well, he'd um, probably appreciate a, well, a more obscure reference yeah. to his career I'm than good. the sure. obvious. And I'm and I'm going to say this. You know, Shatner's <laughs> going to have to take a direct hit from a nuclear warhead to go away. So he is you the know. guy. Thank you know, goodness. hats off. He's Thank going to goodness. outer space. That's all I got to say. Thank goodness, <laughs> man. I love his show, The Unexplained. Oh, we're we're loving that. I think Max oh, is watching that show with too. It. Yeah. All right, but guys, we got to get to the. Uh, yeah. This is this is. Um, can we post this? Is this something advisable to post on Geek Tank Radio? Oh, oh, the trailer Facebook page. Yes, a trailer came out. I've, Winnie I, the Pooh. I've seen the age demographic <laughs> of the people on our Facebook page. This is perfect for them. Now, if you got kids, please don't take them. To, this is Winnie the Pooh. Do not, blood do and money. Not take let's kids. To let's, this. let's let's let's. It's be, almost come funny, on. but let's be honest. <laughs> Anybody who listens to us. Who has kids? Those kids are already, you know, they're already uh, prepared they're already for this. They've yeah. wa they watched this they're trailer ruined. before we did. Okay, Brandon, who is behind this effort? This is almost—it's got to be satire, <laughs> I, uh, right? No, no, no. no it's it is horror movie. All right, so what's the premise? All right, it, the it, premise behind this is that Christopher Robin left the Hundred Acre Woods and his imagination behind to go to college. While in college, he met a woman that he will, you know, that he is looking forward to spending the rest of his life with, okay. and he wants to introduce her to his best friends. <laughs> his best friends happen to be Winnie the Pooh and the various uh, denizens of the Hundred Acre Woods. Right. Well, while he was gone, and they didn't have him and his moral compass to help them. They've gone savage. They went rogue. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Hundred Acre Woods is not looking too good right see, now. See, <laughs> Rise Waterfield is the director see, of this. See, and I just want to know. He's the sicko what, behind What this. drugs brought this dream about? Oh, come on. And who greenlit in, in, this thing? In, in a world of true crime showbiz pizza uh, yo stories and yeah. video game Five Nights at Freddy's, it was only a matter of time before oh, anything Freddy's having to do with God. kids Got turned into a horror movie. We've already Willy's seen. Wonderland. We've already you seen know, the. On. We've already seen the Banana Splits movie, which mm. had the mm. uh, the animatronic uh, android Banana Splits go rogue and oh, murder yeah. a bunch of people and try and kidnap children. Right. We have seen Willy's Wonderland, which was obviously originally supposed <laughs> to be a script for Five Nights at Freddy's until there was a rights dispute. Right. And that is the that is a great uh. Nick Cage movie because. Nicholas Cage doesn't utter a single word in that movie. No. You said that's his best performance it, ever. It's, it's awesome. He, yeah, it's, it's terrible, like, but it's awesome. He 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 cleans up. He fights a robot. He plays pinball. 
And he then does. he then he changes his shirt. Repeat. Uh, Brandon, but here's yeah. the confusing question. Okay. How do you how do you get the rights to do this? Isn't well, Disney going to have something to the, say about here's this? Here's the great thing about it. Last year in the U.S., uh, the original uh, Winnie the Pooh book by A.A. A. Milne, it's public as of 20, well, actually as of this year, as of 2022, it is full on public domain and Disney can't tell you you can't do it. That's that's an interesting dynamic. So they did, when they when they made the movies and all that, they didn't buy the, the well, rights well, and all that. Well, they couldn't. They licensed it. Interesting. So, so. Is the estate of the so this is public domain? There's no yeah, yeah dude. If you wanted oh, to go, wow. if you wanted to go and do a Winnie the Pooh, uh, you know, short film that we could debut at the Memphis Comic and Fantasy Convention, yeah, you could. Okay, and yours could be a whole lot more wholesome than this one. Well, this looks terrible. I mean, it it, it looks shocking <laughs> and horrifying, and I just uh, wonder how many it, young people are going to watch it just because. It's got Winnie the Pooh in it. Like, oh, please, I, parents, I don't, don't, don't let your kids watch well, this. So. this. It's I, I, just I awful. Hate, I, I, I have to say that, you know, our theaters, at least locally, have gotten a lot better about who they let into R-rated films. Good. And okay. this is gonna, But this is going to be streaming within 15 days of the release. So, uh, it, I yeah. hate to say it. I, this is not my kind of movie, but people, I almost have to watch it. People who looks, should watch this or it, who shouldn't watch this are going to watch it. And I would not be a bit surprised if our friend Corey Kaufman helps his mm. son build a blood and honey <laughs> Winnie the Pooh costume for mm. MCFC. Well, the mm. cosplay possibilities are right there. I mean, oh. it's basically it looks like a full grown man with a, the, the what I want. What we didn't see in the trailer is whether Winnie the Pooh talks, you know, yeah. and what what does that sound like? I well, mean, uh, <laughs> Craig David Dalslet right. is who's running around okay. in a Pooh Bear suit. So. And uh, Chris Cordell I, is Piglet. What so I I'm imagine, what I imagine, Joe, is that all right. You know the uh, the the old lady voice that is in you know so many animated features where it sounds like she's been smoking twelve packs a day for twenty years. Oh, okay. She was like in Monsters Inc. I, I can't oh, remember yeah. the actress. I know what you're talking about. But yeah. that voice, imagine that with a little bit more of a gruffness to it, as he says, "Bother." Yeah. Could this movie possibly be good? Could this movie have a message that's important to hear? I mean, don't abandon your youth <laughs> is obvious from the beginning because they only went crazy because Christopher Robin left them. Can you imagine? Well, what it's important to leave out enough yeah. kibble and bits. Can, <laughs> can you, you imagine what would have happened yeah. if rather than donate Woody and Buzz, Andy had just left them? Um. Okay, yeah, because I was thinking immediately of Toy Story when you said when yeah. you, when we're talking about this. So, is this a warning tale? I mean, do we do? <laughs> and what is this going to do to children that Stand somehow get a hold of well, this? Well, I'm going to say this: there's they're going to be afraid to throw out any the, of their stuffed animals. In the credits, there is a there is a very specific role listed: therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Who's therapist? Well, it doesn't matter. It, like because, everybody it doesn't matter therapy. because so many, uh, so many psych students and and professors and and just pontificators have uh, talked about how the various characters of Winnie the Pooh are the products of a damaged psyche. Well, I don't know, man. This horror movie looks like it checks all the boxes. You got yeah, a bunch of uh, a bunch of teenagers that that are saying, "Hey, this this uh, isolated cabin in the middle of the woods looks like a nice mm. place to spend a weekend." Hey, mm. this. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> rather than run to, uh, you know, the car and get away, let's run into the middle of the woods to you well, know, you know, escape this well, murderer. I believe the See. commercial <laughs> summed it up when it says, you make horrible decisions when you're in a horror movie, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we'll be, we'll be following this with uh, with great interest. Oh, so. I'll be watching it as blood soon as I can. Winnie the Pooh, Blood mm. and Honey, please don't let your kids watch it. We don't, we, we got enough problems in the world, but... Um, Let's I don't face know if, it. if your kids watch it, they may never want to leave their room again. That's true. So, hey, uh, <laughs> that'll keep them out of trouble. Right. <laughs> yeah, this little stuff piglet walking, watching the yeah, door. Too. Nobody will come out. Uh, I, we, you know, we've got we got quite a bit to cover on our plate today. So, can we? Can I ask you? You talked about the harsh realities of streaming series renewal, right? And I gotta partly wonder if some of this is. I don't. I don't want to use the word clickbait, but marketing strategies or if it's just ways of getting more views or something but you know a well, couple of our shows that we like might even be on the chopping block right. even though and, they're hugely successful so. and here's here's the thing um we witnessed something this year that had never happened before okay netflix clocked a loss um oh so they lost money this year yes they lo they lost a lot of money mm -hmm. i thought that was another one of these 
no, 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 scheme, no, no, so they no, really it's, did. It's, it's true. They lost a lot of money, and they lost a lot of subscribers. Now, they have slowly been building back up. Okay. And bully for them, yay. But in doing so, a lot of their stuff that's, you know, like super expensive to produce, like Lock and Key right now just dropped its final uh, season. Right. Uh, we know that Stranger Things has always been designed to be, uh, you know, five seasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the Duffers have said that since the get-go. Uh, we're, we're getting a little bit of a time between now and season five, which means it'll be heading out soon. Yeah, but you know, you, there's so many things that they've got out there that, because people are like, I got too much content. I've, uh, I'll wait until I, you know, I'll, I'll binge this season, even though I love this show. I'll binge it in a couple months. But if you don't do it like right off the bat, the algorithm shows that the show uh, show uh, it basically calculates that the show has cooled, mm-hmm. and which means it is less likely to be bringing in subscriptions. So Netflix is less likely to give them money. Right now, one of the best things on. Uh, streaming across the board right now is the Sandman, I mean, which we're going to talk. The number one series in the right, world right which now. Which we're going to talk. Yeah. Well, uh, dra- uh, you know, House of Dragons just mm. kind of like dethroned it. Oh, okay. But I mean, you got Game of Thrones coming back. That's going to be. It crashed the HBO Max. Yeah, now. yeah. Ga- Game of Dragons kind of yeah. was the biggest so, thing that ever got released. Right. Okay. So, so right now, though, is number. W- it's been number one in streaming. You know, for multiple weeks, but. Even so, because of how expensive it is to produce, it's not guaranteed a new season. Because I'm not big into social media, but I have just... Whenever there's something like this, sometimes I'll just start tracking some social media accounts. So I've been following Neil Gaiman's posts. And I will say this for Neil Gaiman. He's pretty positive, and he he likes to interact with the fans quite a bit. He's a good guy. But he also puts out the the news. He's like, you know, look, I know all of you are craving for a season two, but... You know, if you keep supporting it, maybe. But he says, I can't promise there's going to yeah. be a season and, two. And that's and the so, thing, though. He's, he, he won't sugarcoat the news. He's right. not going to no, go, no. well, we had a great season. I hope you enjoyed it. No, he's going to tell you straight up, if you want more, you've got to watch. you got to get other people to watch. You've got to get that you algorithm. Clock those numbers. you got to get that algorithm to get the attention of the humans. So when I hear that, Brandon, my immediate thought is the Netflix executives are pushing that narrative because obviously they want more. But it... It's wink, wink. Not you know. We're definitely giving you a second season, but is no, no. I it's mean, not guaranteed. It's or? not guaranteed. Uh, oh, okay. And I would say that maybe three years ago, if it had come out when Netflix was still you know showing significant growth each quarter, they would have just gone ahead and thrown money at them, going, yeah, yeah, keep it coming. Because there's yep. so many. But if you look at it right now, the the shows that are getting renewals while they're just hitting, or even before their first season hits are shows that aren't as expensive to produce. Right. Is that their thing? Because the Netflix doesn't just make their own content, you know. So, right. I mean, in they fact, li- that's probably li- a small percentage they license, of what they carry. They license so. a lot of it. Is that is that where they're losing money, is just uh, making all this stuff? or No, it's more along the lines of because there's so many different streamers out there now, streaming is basically consuming itself. I, so I always people, wondered if it's you know, just their, yeah, they're going to shoot like, themselves in the like, with all this stuff. The, well, well, the even streaming Spotify services, has come yeah. out with a video service. Right. I mean, yeah. just to tell you how many people are yeah. in this game. Oh, that's game. true, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say it like this. Um, Spotify, I don't see as being anything to worry about when it comes to the streaming so much. Right, but, but they're it, in the know, game. But, but, you know, yeah. they're, they're, they they're get t- on Roku? Well, they're taking on, you know? Spotify is planning to take on YouTube, which yeah. YouTube has gotten really lame as far as you know, their algorithm, the way it pushes everything, and all that jazz, um, because they they don't have any kind of real competition. They the closest they can do thing, what they want to do. Right? The closest thing they have to competition is Twitch, which is a completely different. Yeah, uh, you I know, can't think of audience. who's competing with them, honestly. So yeah. Spotify, in even if they're even if it doesn't work out in the end, Spotify having this new video streaming service, you know, like this content creation service for all intents and purposes, challenging YouTube, even if. Even if Spotify doesn't kill YouTube, it will make YouTube better. Yeah. I just wonder what, but, the, what the future holds with this because, yeah. man, I could see it's it's like the next shiny yeah. thing comes along and Netflix, yeah. Hulu, and all of them, they could just be out of business well, that's, in, that's a, exactly, in no time. Well, it's that's, like, that's the know. thing. It's like they may, be, I mean, they may be out of business soon anyway. Hulu, Disney's pulling a lot of stuff from Hulu onto the Disney Plus service. Uh, the only other people who have, uh, you know, stock with Hulu now is NBC, and they're bringing their stuff over to Peacock. So it's pretty much going to just end up getting dissolved. Hulu's going to end up getting dissolved probably within the next year or two. 
that's the thing. Changes come so rapidly yeah. that it's like, man, and spe- it, it, like I said, a new and, app gets invented. And don't even or get me started you know? on uh, HBO Max. If you know, outside of things like you know, House, the House of Dragons, and all that, we can pretty much see where Discovery is cannibalizing a lot of HBO Max. Yeah. But it's going to be WB Discovery soon, and. There will be no HBO Max. Yeah, I have a prediction, Alan. If we don't hear some rant about Warner Brothers in the next week or two, uh, Brandon's not doing his job because I mean they canceled, uh, they they canceled the the uh, Batman animated show yep. that's coming out. The, they, they, you know all sorts of stuff, and it, and it's they're just making a lot of changes that have people scratching. They their removed so. two hundred episodes of Sesame Street, and they lost <laughs> a lot of subs- <laughs> they lost a lot of subscribers who have it specifically, right? So their kids have something to watch during right. the Saturday mornings. Yeah, so the streaming dramas are continuing. Oh, it's and, on. And, and we're on the front lines bringing you the information. So, well, uh, you're listening to Geek Tank Radio here at News Talk 98.9 The Roar of Memphis. We're going to take a quick break, and I can't wait. We're going to dig into uh, so the good. Sandman. Geek Tank Radio. I realized at that time I was born of two fathers, Elias and Mega Weapon. News Talk 98.9 The Roar of Memphis. Yeah, I've always felt that way myself. I can I can relate to this, man. Anyway, well, mm. don't roll your eyes at me, Brandon. I can, I, I'm not I, even looking at Brandon, and he's rolling his I eyes. Wasn't I wasn't rolling my eyes at you, actually. Mega Weapon is a, has been a huge influence in my life, and I'm not ashamed to say it. And welcome Probably. back to uh, Geek Tank Radio, everybody. And if you don't know what that's all about, go watch Mystery Science Theater He has that can-do attitude. Just blow through everything. That's a challenge. Exactly. Uh, I'm Joe Thorderson here with my friends Brandon Olmstead and Alan Gilbreth and our buddy Max over there behind right. the glass with the deep cuts. When it no, comes riding to, the Mega Weapon. Yeah, with the deep cuts mm. when it comes to our rejoiners. Okay, now I'm rolling my eyes at the two. Mm. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, guys, in a moment, uh, we're going to get so to Alan, Sandman. Huh? when are we going to take Geek Tank on the road and leave these two to do their own show? Oh, my goodness. Not a bad, not a bad <laughs> idea. Probably a good way to do it. So, hey, uh, I just want to say this uh, real quick. I didn't warn Brandon about this, but um, don't think that we're ignoring the James Webb uh, Space Telescope. They're showing us some pretty co- – they're quietly out there kicking some kadiddlehoff or showing us – New images of the solar again. system and of galaxies near and far, yeah. and uh, at some point they're going to be the number one story in the in the world when they discover right. life somewhere else. I wasn't so. sure what the vibration coming from my left was, but yeah. now I've looked over. The ears are up and the tail's yeah. wagging. No, yeah. don't yeah. say that. Yeah. I'm going to say it every time you say Kadiddlehofer. Okay, it, it's uh, you know I'm I'm going to go to Star Registry and I am going to buy him. The Kadidalhofer star. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. So then, anyway. Then, then I'm going to go to established titles and get my large ship so I can tell you all the <laughs> get yeah. off my land. But we want to, you know, we're, we're keenly aware, but we've been long overdue to discuss the Sandman, which we've, we're all eagerly uh, waiting. And I believe, Max, you've worked through the series. Brandon has. I've already watched it twice. Uh, I think Alan's up to date. You never know with Alan. He's kind of sneaky. He may... He may fudge his numbers a little <laughs> he, bit. He like, literally but, just skipped to the uh, episodes with Mervyn Pumpkinhead and just watched those scenes. See, honestly, Mervyn was the least interesting character to me. They he they they really sold the fact that Mark Hamill was in it, but he was what in it for like three minutes or something. He hey, okay, all right, that's fine. But well, uh, you know, there was some good lines between him and the Raven. Um, you like Matthew the Raven? I so, like Matthew, Matthew. was probably the Raven. one of my favorites too. I like Matthew the Raven because Matthew the Raven is being played by Pat Oswald, uh-huh. who was my favorite culinary rat. Um, so I'm waiting on this Raven to cook something at any moment in the entire series. Cooked. I don't think he. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> by the way, folks, we'll be dealing in spoilers, and so you know, obviously, the Sandman has been. It's been talked about for years it came out in 1989 and for decades they've been talking about putting it on screen and it's never happened it's they've people have started on it and it's fine but uh it just never worked you always heard the story you know like with a wrinkle in times with people going it's just impossible to capture correctly right well i don't know how they found a way to do it but they did pretty good Um, over there at netflix yeah, yeah. I mean, and so what I think the key with this whole thing is Neil Gaiman is is involved in this. And he, uh, the big concern everybody had was, can you fit the texture? Because it's a very unique comic book and right. um, it's a uh, graphic novel, however you want to say it. And um, capturing that spirit and the essence was, was the problem with bringing it to the screen in the past. Nobody really had the vision. And finally, they're like, well, why don't we just let Neil Gaiman 
more or less yeah. <laughs> run this operation. It's like, hey, he thought of it, he drew it, he yeah. he he talked about it, and uh, you know what? Just let him film it. Yeah. The yeah. first thing to say is, uh, what's the name? Tom Sturgis, the uh, yeah. the Tom actor. Sturge. Yes, he is outstanding. That guy, it, uh, he's my favorite character in the show. I will say, although all of everybody wow. cast is really what is is great, but he but he it, he really sure? captures. I the think spirit. Franklin's my favorite. Um, just just the whole uh, the car uh, the car only missed me by that much. Oh, by that much, really? And Franklin's in it for like sixty seconds. Okay. I know, but he's he's so earnest. Okay, but um. <laughs> no, I, they, I, I they sold nailed the scene well. They nailed yeah. casting almost <clears throat> perfectly across the board. Mm -hmm. You know my one caveat to that. Okay. And as much as I love Gwendolyn Christie, she is not the, she's not my Lucifer. And yeah. I'm not even going to blame it on her not being Tom Ellis from Lucifer. I, L Lucifer's just missing that charismatic charm. Um, I think what was missing, uh, if if I had one thing. To, in, in the comics, it's funny because, you know, we're dealing with the endless. These are characters that are, you know, been around and right. they're staying around. And they deal, they they travel the planes. They 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 go to hell. They, yes. they deal with Lucifer and demons. And in the comics, I think they really captured the fact that um, Lucifer, in if you're, you know, looking at the Bible, he should be charming but also sinister. Like yeah. there has to be something enticing about him that makes you want – and. I feel like uh, Gwendolyn Christie captured She's, the charming element, but, but I never really felt threatened by her. Gwendolyn Christie you know, is so. stoic. Yeah, yeah. And I will always see her as Brianna of Tarth. I mean, even when I saw when she was Captain Phasma in you know the Star Wars sequels, mm -hmm. you know there was just there's something almost regal about her, which she nails that part. Right. But there is a charismatic charm about Lucifer as he tells you what he's going to do to you and what you, you know, what kind of punishment you're going to have. But almost makes you happy that he's telling you in a certain way in the comics. <laughs> and and Tom yeah. Ellis over on, when they did the Lucifer show did a pretty good job of that, but never really captured it completely. Yeah. But and maybe it's just that no human really has that kind of char charisma. Maybe that's it. Maybe you just will never find someone you know, who makes perfectly. I would have. I would tell you the weird casting to this, where you need a time machine. I would love to have seen Tim Curry in this role. Uh, okay, just as a weird twist uh, okay. of okay someone bizarreness. Sh someone delivery. shut off Al Alan's mic. Uh, just uh, okay. Just I'm, out there. I'm willing to hear you out. What do you mean, Tim Curry as as? Lucifer. Yeah, I, I would have I would have gone with that. He he played a number of very bizarre characters in his career that I think he could have carried this off. Well, all right. Well, I'm looking at Mason Park, and Mason is carrying a really difficult role, and I don't know any other words other than utterly shredding it. Of what what an amazing character. Um. Okay. Because well, Mason's playing Desire. Uh, oh, okay. Well, let's, let's, so if you're new to, uh, the Sandman, if you're not familiar, basically these are called the endless. They have been around since the beginning of creation and they're going to be, as death said, yep. she'll be the last being or the last She's entity she, yeah. when, when the Gallic, uh, when the universe ends, she will close the, put up the, the stools and close the door behind her. So you have death, dream, destiny, destruction, desire, uh, despair and delirium i wonder why he started them all with a d whatever but the this is a family right. and they handle those realms so if any for example dream if any being in the in the universe has the ability to dream like a cat or yes. an octopus or whatever or a human being he manages those dreams and they show them it, there's a couple of comics where they show them in all these other forms they show them in alien form they show right. them in cat form they show you know that so the, the, the brilliance of, of this universe is it's a vast universe. It covers all time and space. There's really no story that can't be told in the Sandman universe. So right there, that's a, a pretty big right. palette, right. which is one of the genius, you know, moves. So but um anyway, so they brought that to the they brought that to the screen. And so Brandon, this year we were dealing with um literally Morpheus is going to hell. He's going to, uh, he's visiting people that he dealt with 10,000 years ago. Right. He's going through, you know, he's meeting William Shakespeare. It's, I well, don't know, man. Basically, it's the I'm back. Yeah. Right. You know, in, in a misguided attempt uh, to end death 
of Dream wound up captured and was gone for 100 years. Yeah. And 100 years has now passed. And as we love to say, the world has changed. Yeah. So Dream comes back. And, you know, it's a fundamentally basic story. It's just kind of like, you know, this is how I did everything before, but this is where the world has moved to while I was gone. Right. And so now you have this season, these episodes of Morpheus, Dream, basically getting back up to speed with where, Well, and I guess we're going to say the entire universe and for re him. Rebuilding yeah. a kingdom that got... <clears throat> Devastated That's been, over a well, century. Yeah. Well, blessingly for him, he had basically good staff. <laughs> who, That's who, true. Well, kind of kept the ball rolling, but they rolled with the times. So he has to go through a little bit of an evolution in these episodes to get up to speed. Right. Yeah. It's it's a very interesting... I guess for me, Max, you never read the comics. You're unfamiliar with the source material. Did you have any trouble following this? Because it's, I, I just wondered if it's confusing to people. So. It wasn't confusing to me. I have vague recollections about just the tiny bits of the plot and everything, but it wasn't difficult for me to follow. Okay. Well, what did you think of the, you know, did this uh, pique your interest and everything? I mean. I, do, I feel like it definitely, ha I really liked how it, just the writing overall, you could tell like the skills and the level of restraint on the part of particular characters. Like I like that whole idea of the character. I feel Gaiman's one of his real strong points is giving the characters a certain level of freedom. Like you, the you know that Neil Gaiman doesn't necessarily seem like the man. Like in terms of personality, he doesn't necessarily seem like the personality that some of his characters have like so but like they have sort of an independent existence outside of the creator and so i feel he has enough restraint and enough intelligence to be able to write characters that are outside even his own realm of personality hmm well they definitely span personality so but i mean uh i, I think it's great that he's involved because the one thing that stood out to me brandon was all the dialogue i think that the, like i said tom sturgis as a dream has some he delivers some awesome lines he does uh and Honestly, I don't think you could have found someone who would have embodied Morpheus better. He looks just like him. Yeah, he I really mean, does. He's, yeah. yeah, he's built. He, he's built like him. He's got the hair. He's got the and he's got a a, a real right. regalness and yet kind of a street level the quality. Right. right. He has the mannerisms from the comic book. Mm -hmm. yeah. How the character and, and this is a big thing. Um, if you've ever taken an acting class of. It is shockingly how hard it is to look natural. I, I can believe that, yeah. A, and this character that he's playing has to have a certain presence and way of standing and a way of not moving that it would be very difficult for the average actor to pull off. So hats off to Tom on this one. Yeah. One thing I also appreciate about Morpheus as a character in terms of his portrayal as well is... I heard a really good quote that humility is honesty and Morpheus carries a lot of power with by virtue of his office and everything. And he carries himself with a certain level of dignity, like when he was talking down to some of the demons in hell. And I just really like that a lot. Like, so like he's very honest about the fact that he's a powerful being. He's not arrogant and like about it, but he, at the same time, he doesn't dismiss it as well. He's not a coward either. He showed up and he's like, uh, he shows up at the gates of hell because he has to go get his helmet back. So he's without his protection, and he's like, "Guard your tongue, demon!" You know, basically, don't talk to me that way. Right, right. And and he challenges, and he has, he he basically challenges a demon to a one of the most interesting contests of all time. You know, oh, for his immortal so. soul too. So, but um, I love the way he steps into different situations. He could be in the back alley. Of somebody, you know, a drug addict dying with mm -hmm. his sister there or facing, you know, immortal beings like uh, Lucifer yeah. and stuff. Yep. It's a pretty, you know, it's a huge, rich universe. And yet it still somehow stays grounded in reality. Well, I mean. Well, I mean, mostly. I, I, everybody <laughs> dreams. Yeah. Everybody, you know, well, it is everybody dies. So it's like, you know. Well, as. Some as, people more than once. Yeah. <laughs> well, as many other uh, shows featuring immortals or gods or whatever have pointed out that many of the the basic aspects of being human are considered immortal. 
Right. And the family here, from from death to dreaming to desire and despair, these are all common everyday human conditions. Right. Yeah. And he he's done just an amazing job. And it's a lot of fun watching how they opted to portray this in video form. Yeah. And I like the colors. I like the backgrounds because a lot of times, uh, a, a lot of shows, and you can tell this is just amazingly British <laughs> uh, in the fact that they don't spend a lot of time on the background. If they want it deep, dark, and creepy, it's deep, dark, and creepy. But there's not a great deal of 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 overwrought detail being done in this. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much no. It's deep, dark, and creepy. But I want you to look right here in in the fourth stage because this is where these two are talking. Um, one thing that that I was wondering how they were going to thread the needle when I heard this was coming out is, uh, Sandman is it's it's it could be a horror movie. Like there's some serious graphic shocking horror in the Sandman yes. comics. It could be pretty racy and things like that. And I was wondering how far dreams. they were going to take this. Yeah. Like, and I f is this PG-13, Brandon? I mean, or is this uh, R-rated? I, I don't know what it is. I would is, say so. this this very well could be TVMA. I really didn't pay any attention to that. I was just engrossed in it. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, it's TVMA. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, there's a couple episodes. Like, I got to be honest, that diner episode was hard for me to watch. There was yeah. some stuff in there that... Um, it was it was very true to the comic. I will say that, but well, that it was, was meant yeah. to be hard to watch. Yeah, but uh, which is your favorite episode, Brandon? Because uh, uh, oh, because they do sort of stand alone, even though they all tie in with the. Uh, yeah, know. I'm I'm gonna have to go with. I think it's uh, it's it's the bridge episode between the two stories uh, on you know. Uh, the sound on her wings. The sound of her wings, yeah. yeah. All about, and which is a when, reference to death. Where, uh, you know, the first half of the episode is uh, is Dream hanging out with death as she goes about her day and, you know, does her job. And then the second half is him and Hobbs through the years. And he's remembering, you know, meeting right. the man. And, you know, they, they took away the guy's you know, ability to die and has basically, you know, they've met every hundred years. And then he missed the meeting uh, in eighty nine. You know, in eighty nine, because he was he was you know, he was imprisoned. Yeah. And then when he gets back, there he is, and uh, he apologizes for being late because you know that's you know something you do for a friend. After you know the last time they'd met, he would told him you know it's like we're not friends, you know the, you're just you know you're you're a project. Right. And uh, he goes, if you you know. I will be here in a hundred years, and if you show up, that will prove that you are my friend. And that just happens to be the one he missed because of the fact that he was imprisoned. And when he gets back, the place that they've always, you know, uh, you know, met up is closed. It's gone. And there's a there's a new like cafe down the road. What What's interesting about that episode is like it it spans I want to say five centuries, something like that. So yeah. they're going to meet every hundred years. They have drinks, and then they go about their business. And it's amazing how. Life changes every hundred years, yeah. especially when you go from 1889 to 1989. Yeah. There's suddenly cell phones. They're they're you know. I think I think one of the things that really gets me is that you know they're they're together maybe not even five minutes before he points out you know William Shakespeare in the in in the you know oh yeah in the tavern and you know they they talk about how you know he's he's kind of you know he's a hack. So Dream goes to uh, set him on his ways. Now, I haven't read all of the comics. I've, I've read most of the big major stories. But in the third graphic novel, there's a story in there, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Yep. Does, isn't that a continuation from basically where we saw him walk off with William Shakespeare? The, yeah, William Shakespeare gets sprinkled in there. That's what's, that's what's great about this. When you read the Sandman comics, you never know what you're going to get. You could be... You know, you could be having a, a conversation with William Shakespeare. Then, then in the next page, he's he's talking about some character in Africa five thousand years ago, yeah. or some intergalactic. So that's what keeps it fresh. But or, yeah, William know, Shakespeare definitely a, plays a big role. The dream of a thousand cats. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's um because all he he's the he's the master of all dreams, not just human dreams. Any any creature that can dream, and it's interesting when you see him take take the form of one of those you know creatures too. So this actually kind of brings to me like I don't know whether or not you'd call it closing thoughts, but just kind of something a quote that I had heard with regards to 
dreaming um, uh, by Neil Gaiman and everything. It said in one of the later seasons, later episodes, Morpheus tells a recently captured nightmare that the nightmare's purpose is to reveal a dreamer's fears so that they can face them. And so Gaiman was asked, what did you learn from your dreams or your nightmares? And this is a really good quote on the part of Neil Gaiman. He said, I've learned to trust my dreams and my nightmares. When I was a kid, I had terrible nightmares. And when I was writing Sandman, they continued. But whenever I'd get a nightmare, I would wake up thrilled and immediately jot it down and go, whoa, I could use that. Fairly quickly, the, the nightmares just went away. My eventual theory was that whoever was giving them, giving me them was so disappointed by my reaction to them that they just couldn't be bothered anymore. <laughs> well, there is something to that if you confront your fears rather than yeah. running from them. I do, I do love the fact that, you interesting. Know, that after ex exiling Goth, uh, you know, because she had taken on the form of a dream instead of a nightmare when she was out in the world, when he rebirths her as a dream. Oh, and, yeah. And with the wing, those those crystallized wings and everything. That was... She was a nightmare who became... Who became a dream. Who became a yeah. dream. Yeah. That's that whole transformer yeah. things with the, um, uh, with the Decepticons where it's like form doesn't necessarily dictate function. And so Morpheus <laughs> is kind of learning that hard lesson. <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting. The connection I would have never thought of, Max. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And I will say, I mean, um, I just wonder if this is going to usher in. Every now and again, okay, so we had the Sandman and then... They ran it ran its course. It started in eighty nine. I want to say it went till about ninety six, something like that. Then it just went, you know, that was it. The story yeah. ran. And then about twenty years later, he wrote a one off story. I have to wonder if he's gonna come back and write something else. Cause now it's been totally renewed. Everybody's talking about mm. it, whether the season two gets renewed or not, everybody is talking about it. Yeah. It's making an impact. So Well, I mean, there's there's been talk about a uh a second volume to the book that he wrote, that one off. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently that he's got in his mind that he just hasn't put to paper yet. It's the, 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 the beauty of it. Like I said, you can pick one thing and I will say it, uh, the comics really capture, you, you could read them in sections. It's not, I know there is, there's sort of a, a, a plot line that runs through all of them, but honestly yeah. you can just pick one of them up, read. It's like usually about three or four say, um, sections long yeah. and then put it down. And yeah. you know, that's what I like. Well, I'm going to ask you something, Joe. Okay. And should we get our second season, which, you know, we I hopefully will get. Um, I'm not going to talk about Destiny. I'm not going to talk about The Prodigal, who, if anybody out there wants to know who that is, that's Destruction. Right. Um, but who, who, ironically, is the most cheerful part of the right. family. <laughs> the guy that destroys I, 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 I always, I always <laughs> think it's funny. They all have, like, ghostly pale skin and right. yeah, everything. And then you got, you know, destruction the prodigal who's just like this big burly viking looking dude with red hair and a beard right and he's just all sorts of happy but who would you cast in the role of delirium see delirium is the most interesting character because she um she oh. she's very goofy but she has the ability to speak normal she's you know she can speak very reasonably but she said it hurts her so yeah. but delirium is sort of the the because the thing is you have to cast her with somebody that would have good chemistry with destruction because they're the two closest. Right. That so I what about Billie now, Eilish? Yes. I, I, I think I agree yeah, with that. It's kind of an odd thought, but she actually wandered across my mind yeah. as well. Yeah. Went, you know, quirky, bizarre. Yeah. You get you can buy both sides I of mean, the character. I want Billie Eilish is uh delirium and, and give me Carl Urban is uh the oh, prodigal. Like that's See, I wondered about that because I'm like the low hanging fruit is like, well, let's put Chris Hemsworth, but he's already done his Viking thing. But I, I wondered since the, you know, could Idris Elba carry it or could I um, Idris could I carry any? I Idris want, can carry, but any. you need somebody Idris, that's really fun. I want Idris's destiny. Um, mm -hmm. he could do that. Yeah, actually, I think you're right. He's more. Yeah, I'd I'd put him as destiny. Um, we'd love your thoughts, folks. Let us know. Yeah. Who would you cast as the yeah, rest of the on, man? Go to the Geek Tank Radio Facebook page and 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 weigh in. But um, that's that's what's great about it is there's um and and the thing is multiple actors could play multiple roles sure. like we saw in one of the episodes. You know, so you we know. never even got into the stuff about uh, the fact that you know they actually use uh, Constantine's true name pronunciation in this. Oh, they did. Yeah. Oh, I, that's a small detail. Yeah, I mean, bad, just so, okay. well, I mean, that's the, that's how you know that Gaiman's involved. Um, he did a great job. The dialogue's great. Everything about it is great. It, it he had a he had a lot of uh, writing on this because there was a lot of fans that could have been disappointed. Yeah. But so far, it seems like the positive 
or the reviews are very positive. So anyway, we'll be following this story with great interest. But guys, it's uh, it's uh, we're out of time, so it's time to go.